Okay, so let's see if we can figure out the height of a hexagonal unit cell. That's gonna be the distance from, I'll show you this in a second, from the middle of the atoms in the, the top of the unit cell to the middle of the atoms in the bottom, right? So that distance there, that's, that's the height, we call that C. Compared to this distance here between close packed atoms, we call that A. So what's the C over A ratio? You might know the answer is 1.633. It's actually pretty easy to prove. I'm gonna show you that. And so this is actually, believe it or not, um, a hexagonal, it's, it's a, got a few extra atoms, but it's a hexagonal um, structure. And so the, the key in understanding this is we start with this basal plane, right? You can see there's the atoms in the basal plane. We position some atoms into, uh, as part of a close pack plane that's halfway up. Okay, then the next set goes up on top of that, as you might know, these atoms here are directly over top of those ones. That's an A, B, correction, A, B, A stacking sequence, right? That's what we know for HCP uh, as opposed to FCC, which is ABC. So this is A, B, A, this is HCP. These atoms are halfway up. I'm gonna show you that in a sketch in a moment. Um, and you'll see that when we position these atoms halfway up, look at this, I've created a little tetrahedron, right? It's this little structure here. So every time I stack a close packed plane on each on top of another, I create a tetrahedral. We create octahedral interstitial sites as well, but this tetrahedral is what we're gonna use. It's really handy. If you're not familiar with the uh, HCP, uh, sorry, correction with the tetrahedral site, take a look at my uh, tetrahedral video, uh, and hopefully that'll help get you up to speed. It's gonna be pretty, um, pretty straightforward though, uh, and this is just a real fun piece of geometry. Okay, so to get this started, uh, what we need to do is draw a hexagonal unit cell. Um, I'm not an artist, you don't need to be, you just need to get something that kind of works. So uh, I usually like to draw a little hexagon and I've, I've kind of squashed it a little bit because it's gonna end up being in perspective. Uh, and then I give it some height, that's gonna be the C. Um, so give it a bit of height and I can sort out the lengths so they're all the same in a, in a moment. And I need to draw a line that's parallel to that to form the base. So it's gonna look something like this. Uh, and, and I can draw in the hidden lines there, forming a little hexagon on the base. And these edges at the back, making that back face, or those uh, prism planes we call them sometimes. Uh, so there you go, that's a hexagonal unit cell. Just to make sure we're understanding everything, I'll draw the atoms in the bottom plane there. There's atoms in each of these vertices and there's one right there in the center. Okay, so that's fantastic. That's a close pack plane. Now halfway up is this set of atoms here, right? That's the basal plane we just drew. Halfway up are these ones. There's three of those. And so I'm gonna draw those in as best I can. Boop, right there, there, and there. And then I showed you that that makes a tetrahedral site. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna show the direction of contact here forming that tetrahedral site. Okay, so that's it there. That's the tetrahedral site that we want to look at. Um, just to make things a little easier, hopefully, uh, I'm going to draw or attempt my best to draw a tetrahedral site over here that we can kind of work from. Um, and it'll just be a little bit neater than um, trying to work from the one inside the HCP unit cell. But hopefully you can see that's the same thing. Uh, a few um, things we need to define. This um, distance here between close packed atoms in the basal plane, we said is A, okay? Um, and the height of the HCP unit cell, we uh, use, oh, not sorry, not A, why did I draw that? Uh, C, surprisingly hard to think and talk at the same time. So the height is C, the basal plane lattice parameters A, uh, and we wanna figure out, of course, what this C over A ratio is. You might know it's 1.633 in this ideal state, uh, scenario, but let's work that out geometrically. So we've got this uh, tetrahedron here, no problem. Um, let's go ahead and add a few things to it. So I'm gonna add a line that's going straight down and where I intend that to go is straight down to the base and it's gonna intercept, uh, intercept with another line um, and make a 90 degree angle. So we've got a nice uh, little triangle established for ourselves there. Uh, we could also extend a line out this way, um, and that is 90 degrees. I'm trying to draw it in a bit of perspective there, but that'll be useful for us because, of course, we know that this length here we said was A, right? That's nothing new. Same one we had over there. Now, this black line goes halfway out 
okay? So that means that that has got to be A by 2, okay? Hopefully there's no, no magic there. That's how I go halfway out. Uh, what else do we know? Well, we know that these angles in uh, between close-packed directions in a close-packed plane, so from here to here and here, that angle is 60 degrees, right? Uh, any of those internal angles are 60 degrees. And that, of course, also means that this one, which is bisecting that, has got to be 30 degrees. So that's really good. Uh, we don't know yet the length of this line here, this one I've drawn in in blue. Let's call that D. Um, and let's see if we can go from there. Uh, so we could say, all right, no problem. Um, cos of 30 degrees is going to be A by 2 over D. Uh, so from that, we could say, all right, um, that's supposed to be an arrow. I'm saying if we massage this equation, we could solve for D. And D would, of course, just be um, A upon 2 cos 30, right? OK, so that's great. We've got D. Um, now what we'd like to do is say, let's establish this angle here. We're going to call that phi. That's a great uh, Greek letter for an angle here. Um, and actually, you've seen it before if you've watched the video, uh, my tetrahedral video on the C over A ratio, or sorry, correction, the RC to RA ratio for um, the tetrahedral interstitial site. Um, so that's phi. And uh, again, we could say, um, let's do cos phi is going to be equal to D, of course, over, ah, that hypotenuse. Didn't talk about that yet. What's this length here? Well, if that's the distance between, <laughs> excuse me, uh, I just get so excited. This is such beautiful geometry. I'm throwing atoms around. So this is the distance between close packed atoms in the basal plane. Well, this distance here, going up to the atom in the middle, which is this atom uh, at the top of the structure I, I sketched, that's got to be A as well. So this orange line that I've drawn in there is A. And so going back to this cos uh, phi, cos phi is D over A. Well, we established what D was earlier. So D is A upon 2 cos 30. Um, and then we said cos phi was D over A. So we've got A in the denominator. Those, of course, cancel out. And we could say then that phi is going to be equal to cos inverse <coughs> of 1 over 2 cos 30. OK, so hopefully that's not too messy. Let's uh, get a calculator here. So we got 30 cos of that two times. Take 1 over that cos inverse, and that's 54.7 degrees. And I said you might recognize this because that's half of 109.5, which was the bond angle in methane um, that I talked about um, in uh, my other video. So, so that's a familiar angle, but it's going to be really useful to us uh, in just a moment. So now, now that we know what phi is, we can say, OK, sine of phi is going to be equal to that height. Well, that height, because we said this atom resides halfway up, this height is c by 2, isn't it? It's halfway up the unit cell. So that's going to be, so sine phi is opposite, which is c over 2 over um, sine over the hypotenuse, which is a. OK, so that I could write out a little bit more neatly is 1 half c over a. And c over a, of course, is what we're trying to figure out. So this is really nice. Uh, we know that c over a is equal to 2 times sine phi. Let's see if I did this right. Uh, so that was phi sine phi 2 times 1.633. 1.633. So it's that easy. Uh, as long as you have a really good knowledge of this beautiful little tetrahedron here, um, you can do so many things from it. And we just showed that the C over A ratio, the ideal C over A ratio for HCP is 1.633. All right, thanks a lot.